how to identify whether a person is having a psychiatric issue or psychiatric disorder or not when to seek help from a mental health professional uh, or in simple words how to know whether you yourself or you know somebody else is having a mental health issue uh, let us talk about this topic in this video i am dr pravin tripathi i am a consultant psychiatrist and sexual disorder specialist so one of the biggest issues is that as of now there is no blood test that can be done uh, that can tell us that the person is having a psychiatric problem or psychiatric disorder uh, not only a blood test there is no ct scan there is no no, no you know specific finding on mri that can be used to make the diagnosis of a psychiatric disorder and that makes uh, the diagnosis a bit challenging because you have to rely on the symptoms you have to understand the symptoms properly and uh, you have to you know uh, work a very tight rope because uh, we don't want to di unnecessarily diagnose a person with psychiatric issue at the same time we don't want to miss diagnosis so uh, it all boils down to understanding the symptoms and and seeing that whether the symptoms are severe enough to warrant a diagnosis or not so let us talk about the symptoms of psychiatric disorders and in this video i am talking about psychiatric disorders in general i am not talking about a particular psychiatric disorder like anxiety or depression uh, we are talking about psychiatric disorder uh, as as a as a spectrum if i can use that word so uh, broadly uh, the patients with psychiatric disorders may present with symptoms in one of the following four domains what are the four domains either there would be some kind of emotional abnormality or there would be abnormalities in the thought abnormalities in the perception and then some patients may present with you know biological symptoms like uh, sleep disturbances or appetite disturbances so let us talk about all these domains uh, one by one first of all emotions so the common psychiatric disorders like depression and anxiety they are primarily disturbances of emotions so if you talk about dep depression the the presenting complaint is usually sadness of mood the person comes and says that he always feels sad nothing cheers him up even if something good happens in life even if he gets a promotion even he goes out uh, with the family he is not really able to feel happy there is some kind of emptiness inside and uh, nothing makes nothing seems to make it better so feeling sad is one of the important symptoms of depression so patient with depression will present with sadness uh, other patients may present with irritability another abnormality of emotion could be irritability the patient says that he feels irritable all the time what do i mean by that uh, the patient does not feel at ease he gets angry very easy, very easily very very minor issues very trivial things irritate the person he may have an anger outburst the third emotional disturbance could be anxiety the patient may come and say that even even trivial things even things that others simply ignore they tend to make him anxious he feels anxious about almost everything uh going out for a walk he he feels anxious what if somebody hits me the the parents are going out say to stay with one of the siblings he gets anxious that uh, what what if they develop some health issue in there uh, kids are going out the person gets anxious that what if uh, they meet an accident so anxiety is the the primary emotion the person is always anxious uh, sometimes we use the term free floating anxiety the person always feels on the edge nervous so these are some of the emotional disturbances that patient is present with in in some cases for example patients with mania they may present with the emotional disturbance of elevation of mood they are excessively happy very happy without any reason nothing nothing has really you know uh, nothing new has happened in life but they still are very happy dancing enjoying laughing so the first of the abnormalities could be that of emotions that we see in psychiatric disorders secondly we can see abnormalities of thought whatever the person is thinking now the abnormalities of thought are particularly important uh, let's let's discuss the thought abnormalities with examples uh, say let's start with the common mental disorder of depression in patients with depression what we see is the thought pattern is very negative the person sees something negative in everything around him even for himself he has got a lot of negative evaluation going on for example the person gets thoughts like uh i do not have any quality or thoughts like i have not done anything for my family or thoughts like i am a burden on everybody so these thoughts keep on coming in the mind there may be negative thoughts for others also that you know everybody everybody is a thief in this world uh, nobody has values in this world uh, he may have thoughts negative thoughts about the future that the future is bleak future is dark 
nothing good will come out of the future either uh, there may be a negative evaluation of everything that he does even even if if somebody says something nice to this person immediately the thought comes the, the thought comes uh, that he is just being nice to me to make me feel better i have not done anything to you know deserve that praise uh, they are just feeling pity on me and that is why they are saying nice stuff on my face the same person would, would go behind my back and say something sinister something bad this is what happens in depression patients with anxiety disorders they also have negative thoughts but their but but their negative thoughts are of of a different kind uh, they are more of anxiety provoking thoughts or anxious thoughts that something may go wrong as we discussed a, a couple of minutes back that the predominant uh, focus or the predominant theme is that something might go, might go wrong if this person is going to the office the thought comes that what if i get scolded in the office the thought comes that what if my what if my boss humiliate me in the front of in front of everyone the thought comes that what if my boss fires me uh, kids going to the school what if they develop some illness what if they get lost for finances what what if we become poor for health what if somebody develops a serious illness so everything is about some kind of fear something might go wrong this is the the crux of anxiety uh, thoughts or thoughts seen in the anxiety disorder sometimes there may be ruminations about the past the patients may think about things that happened like 10 years back they they may remember their first job and may have thoughts ki when when the boss said this thing to me i should have responded by saying this thing when the boss tried to insult me by saying this i should have responded by saying this thing a chain of thoughts keeps on going in the mind for things that have have happened years back in in the past so this is what happens in patients with anxiety disorder if we talk about serious mental illnesses like schizophrenia the patient may have thought abnormalities like delusion what is delusion delusion is a false belief the patient develops a false belief and there is no reason for holding that belief the patient may suddenly start believing that the neighbors are trying to kill me or the family members want to kill me or that a, a deep conspiracy is being hatched in the world to harm me something bad is about to happen to me or somebody is following me some patients may have thoughts like the cameras have been fitted in the house and they are watching me uh, at times they may have thoughts that somebody is filming me so all these things all these thoughts may develop they are uh, called as delusions false beliefs apart from uh, the abnormalities of emotions and thought in some cases especially in patients with psychotic disorders like schizophrenia there may be there may be abnormalities of perception perceptual abnormalities and the most important one is hallucination uh, we often see that patients with schizophrenia they keep on muttering to self they keep on mumbling to self it appears as if they are saying something but to whom they are saying things that is not known when you ask these patients whom you are talking with they say that they hear some voices they say that somebody is talking with me sometimes they hear more than one voices they hear people talking amongst themselves about them and usually the content of these voices is derogatory the voices may be saying things like you are a bad person you are a sinner you should not be allowed to live so things like this accus- accusatory voices voices using bad words and these patients often keep on responding to those voices and what we see as muttering to self is actually a conversation going on between the person between the patient and the hallucinatory voice uh, usually in psychiatric disorders we see auditory hallucinations patients hearing something which does not exist but there may be visual hallucinations also patient sees something that is not there uh, there could be olfactory hallucinations also patient reports of smelling something which nobody else can smell but but these are rare so usually in patients with psychiatric disorder what we see is auditory hallucination and to a lesser extent the visual hallucinations and then there are certain patients who primarily complain com- come with the complaints of sleep disturbances uh, they may have difficulty in falling asleep the the common complaint is that i go to the bed i lie down on the bed but i am not able to fall asleep thoughts keep on coming in the mind and sleep sleep just does not come or some patients say that i am able to go to bed i am able to fall asleep but it's a broken sleep my sleep gets broken multiple times in the night and once it gets broken it's difficult to go back to sleep then there are patients who come with a classical complaint that they wake up early in the morning they say that usually i used i used to get up at like 8 o'clock in the morning but now my sleep uh, is over by 5 o'clock i get up uh, in the mon- uh, at 5 o'clock in the morning and then i am not able to go back to sleep what is called as early morning insomnia 
देर माइट बी स्लीप इंक्रीज इन द स्लीप ड्यूरेशन हाइपरसोमिया द पर्सन में स्लीप एक्सेसिवली एंड स्टिल नॉट फील फ्रेश वेदर द पर्सन इज हैविंग लैक ऑफ स्लीप और इनसोमिया और एक्सेसिव स्लीप और हाइपरसोमिया यूजली वॉट वी सी इज दैट द पेशेंट सेज दैट डिस्पाइट स्लीपिंग आई आई नेवर फील रिफ्रेश्ड आई गेट अप टायर्ड एंड फीलिंग हैवी इन द हेड अपार्ट फ्रॉम स्लीप देर मे बी एपेटाइट डिस्टर्बेंसेज द पेशेंट मे लूज एपेटाइट दे मे स्टार्ट लूजिंग वेट अदर्स मे स्टार्ट कमेंटिंग दैट वॉट हैपन टू यू वाई आर यू लुकिंग सो वीक वाई आर लूजिंग सो वेट और एल्स दे मे स्टार्ट गेनिंग वेट देर माइट बी इंक्रीज इन एपेटाइट many patients say that they don't feel good and and when they don't feel good just to you know feel a bit better they start gorging on the sweets they start eating high calorie products and may end up gaining weight so uh, in total if we can talk emotional disturbances like sadness of mood or anxiety or uh, irritability thought problems like feeling sad uh, i'm sorry having depressing thoughts uh, feeling hopeless a uh, feeling that there is uh, no no quality in the person having anxiety uh, anxious thoughts anxious ruminations having delusions then perceptual disturbances like illusions hallucinations and then biological symptoms like sleep and appetite disturbances all of these can be a part of uh, psychiatric disorder a particular patient may present with all of these or some of these and as it is the case with physical disorders physical illnesses different disorders present with different symptoms for example a patient with say tuberculosis uh, the person will present with fever uh, sweats sweating in the night lack of appetite maybe weight loss cough phlegm sputum whereas another patient say who has malaria he may present with high grade fever sweating tremors uh, all those things so so like like in physical disorders the presentations are different similarly in in psychiatric disorders also the presentation differs depending upon what is exactly the psychiatric disorder depending upon the type of psychiatric disorder the symptoms may vary what we must remember is that the, there is a very fine line between having a psychiatric disorder and having exaggerated emotions but still in the normal limit for example there is a very fine line in, uh, between being depressed and feeling sad and how do we know whether the person has crossed the line or not how do we know that the person is now having a psychiatric disorder and needs medical intervention or psychiatric intervention usually we rely on whether the symptoms are severe enough to cause distress to the patient and whether they are causing dysfunction in life whether the person's work is getting impacted or not whether the person's personal life is getting impacted or not whether the person's studies are getting impacted or uh, getting impacted or not all these things are used to determine whether the severity is enough to make a diagnosis so in case you are having any of these symptoms or in case you know of a family member or a friend who is having all these symptoms uh, please be very careful if the symptoms are severe enough to cause disruption in daily life if the symptoms are severe enough to cause dysfunction distress then probably what you are dealing with is a psychiatric disorder and as a rule of thumb the earlier you seek help the better are the results we should not just sit on our symptoms we should not just wait for them to go away uh if we find that symptoms are significant enough we should reach out to a professional reach out to a psychiatrist or a clinical psychologist nearby and get the evaluation done so until unless we start becoming more aware of these symptoms until unless we start understanding what depression is what anxiety is how these these illnesses present we would not be able to catch these cases early on so the the whole aim Uh, behind all these videos is to ensure that people get to understand about psychiatric disorders uh, people get to understand the symptoms and uh, people start taking care of their mental health thank you agar aapko depression ki samasya hai to aap dr pravin tripathi se seekh sakte hain ki depression ke patients mein counseling kaise ki jati hai aur un techniques ko use karke depression se bahar nikalne ki journey ko shuru kar sakte hain screen par diye card ko click kare या फिर डिस्क्रिप्शन में दिए लिंक को क्लिक कर डॉक्टर प्रवीण त्रिपाठी के कोर्स में एनरोल करें